the metaphor of the mirror versus the magnifying glass highlights two distinct approaches to personal growth and understanding human behavior. When we use a mirror, we engage in self-examination, taking an honest and introspective look at our own actions, thoughts, and emotions. And this practice fosters self-awareness, allowing us to recognize our strengths and our weaknesses and to make necessary changes and ultimately grow as individuals. And on the other hand, the magnifying glass represents the act of scrutinizing others' faults and shortcomings. And in this episode, we will look at the importance of self-reflection and the dangers of focusing on others' faults with practical steps to take and how to shift our focus from criticizing others to improving ourselves. So stay tuned. This podcast is brought to you by DJ Works Media with resources and ideas for you at mid-career or halftime of life. Check out our online courses where we want you to not only start, but finish. Books available in all versions and songs available for immediate download with sheet music and instrumental accompaniment tracks. Our musicals are family friendly with great music that's memorable and inspiring. Sign up at goalsforyourlife.com forward slash newsletter for weekly updates. Now to our episode. On one of our camp outings, when I was a young, attentive Girl Scout, we took a magnifying glass and we held it just right in the sun to attempt to fry an egg. Well, I don't I actually remember if the egg ever got firm enough to eat, but it taught us the power of sunlight in creating intense heat. And the principle behind this is the magnifying glass's ability to gather and focus light energy. And it demonstrates the significant power of concentrated effort, both in a literal and a metaphorical sense. And mirrors like magnifying glass, it can also be used to harness and concentrate sunlight to generate intense heat, although in different ways. Well, the metaphor of the mirror, if you're watching the the video, you're seeing me hold up the mirror, versus the magnifying glass, it highlights two distinct approaches to personal growth and understanding human behavior. And when we use a mirror, we engage in self-examination, taking an honest and introspective look at our own actions, our thoughts, and our emotions. And this practice fosters that self-awareness, allowing us to recognize our strengths and weaknesses and make those necessary changes, ultimately growing as individuals. Now, I'll admit that sometimes It's hard to look in the mirror because by looking in the mirror, well, we have to take responsibility for our our own reflection as well as our, our own lives. And do we like what we see? Well, on the other hand, the magnifying glass, well, that represents the act of scrutinizing others' faults and shortcomings. And this approach seems to be, oh, it's the much easier human response as it diverts our attention from really our own areas of improvement that we can continue, we can just continue to justify them. But it often leads to judgment, criticism, and a sense of even superiority. Well, it might be easier to point out others' mistakes. It prevents us from addressing our own issues and it can damage relationships. Well, there's a biblical proverb that says in Matthew 7, 3, Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and you pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Overemphasizing others' flaws, it can create a negative and an unproductive mindset, hindering personal growth and fostering that environment of blame rather than self-improvement. This happens in relationships with just hurling each each other. Well, in this episode, we will look at the importance of self-reflection 
and the dangers of focusing on others' faults with some practical steps to take to take each and one of us to take and how to shift our focus from criticizing others to improving ourselves. So we're gonna start with the importance of self-reflection. Well, self-reflection is a crucial practice for personal growth and self-awareness. By regularly examining our thoughts, our behaviors, and our emotions, will we gain a deeper understanding of our motivations and our, and our actions. And this introspection, it allows us to identify patterns and areas in need of improvement, leading to conscious and deliberate changes. Kobe Bryant, legendary basketball player, he often watched hours of game footage to analyze and learn from his own performances. Well, this unyielding commitment to practice and self-improvement, it played a crucial role in his success and his longevity in the NBA. Another athlete, professional athlete, Jason Kendall, the all-star catcher who wrote the book Throwback. Actually, it's a great book. It, he shares how important it was to be prepared for every single game, analyzing every possible field and pitch to be prepared in his own game. He would spend hours doing this while the others were out doing whatever. He knew that if he wanted to continue playing at a high level, he had to put in the preparation and examine not only his own performance, but what the game was all about with a particular team. Most any entertainer or entrepreneur struggles at one point or another with viewing their own work as the reality of seeing any mistake or misstep, it's hard to face. But this is the way to improve. I had a voice coach video all of my rehearsals time and time again so I could improve every part of the show that I was developing. Oh, it was humbling. But it improved my performance and it led to me getting booked because it got so, so much better. Numerous studies underscore the benefits of self-reflection and research has shown that individuals who engage in regular self-reflection, well, they experience improved mental health, including reduced stress and anxiety levels. For example, a study published in the Journal of Behavioral Medicine found that reflective practices such as journaling, which I highly believe in, can significantly lower stress and enhance overall well-being. Well, additionally, self-reflection, it's linked to better decision-making. Well, there's another study in the Harvard Business School. They revealed that employees who spent 15 minutes at the end of the day reflecting on lessons that were learned, they performed 23% better after 10 days than those who did not engage in any reflection. Well, the example I gave of videoing my music rehearsals confirm this fact in my life as my confidence grew as a result of that review and reflection, even though it was hard. Well, these findings highlight the powerful impact of self-reflection on our mental health and our cognitive processes, ultimately leading to more informed and thoughtful decisions. Well, now let's uh, talk about a few dangers of focusing on others' faults. Constantly critiquing others can have several negative impacts, including strained relationships, increased stress, and a lack of self-growth. And we focus when we focus on others' faults, it often leads to judgmental attitudes and critical behaviors that can damage our connections with friends or families and, and even our colleagues. Relationships thrive on empathy, understanding, and support. And when these elements are replaced by criticism mm -hmm. and trust, all of that trust and mutual respect, they are eroded. The act of constantly pointing out others' mistakes it can create an environment of negativity and tension, contributing to increased stress levels really for both the criticizer and those being criticized. And this is especially true, as I've mentioned, in relationships, especially such as marriages or close working colleagues. It's toxic. 
focusing on others' faults, it serves as a defense mechanism to avoid addressing our own personal issues. By directing attention outward, well, we can divert scrutiny away from our, our own shortcomings and our challenges. And this behavior provides a temporary sense of superiority or, or relief, but ultimately it just prevents personal growth and self-improvement as we continue to vent. But personally, I have to be careful of this when going to a concert or listening to someone speak because it's so easy for me to make those quick evaluations. Well, this also applies to my own personal marriage relationship. Unrealistic expectations and criticism could easily tear my husband and I apart. We've had to learn through the years to listen and to own our own part in many issues. And that's caused personal growth as well as growth together. Applying this to individuals and companies, it's easy to remain stuck in a cycle of judgment and deflection in an endless roundabout instead of engaging in the difficult but necessary work of self-reflection and change. The principles in my book, Stop Circling, they are very applicable here. Now, over time, this avoidance of evaluation, it can lead to stagnation without facing those issues honestly and with an open mind. Well, so now we've covered some of all those dangers and the importance. Let's talk about some practical steps for self-reflection. And I'm going to cover three areas. Number one, journaling. As I've told you, I strongly believe in journaling. And journaling allows us to document our thoughts, our experiences, and our emotions, providing a, a clear record of our personal journey. By writing regularly, whether daily or weekly, we create a space to process events, understanding reactions and track progress. It's a place for those feelings. It doesn't take much. Even writing a couple lines at least a couple times a week is a wonderful practice to start. So start by asking some constructive questions such as, well, what are my, what are my strengths and my weaknesses? And what can I improve, of, improve on? Also, what am I grateful for? These questions prompt deeper thinking and they help identify areas for personal development and even clarity about our goals and our aspirations. Howard Schultz, the former CEO of Starbucks, after facing challenges in the company's early growth, well, he took time to assess the company's culture and customer experience. He implemented changes based on his reflections focusing on employee satisfaction and creating a strong company culture. His emphasis on values and community transformed Starbucks into a global brand, and it helped the company thrive in a competitive market. Well, second, seeking feedback. So journaling, now seeking feedback. Feedback from trusted individuals is a valuable component of self-reflection. Friends, family, and mentors, they can offer objective perspectives and constructive criticism that we might overlook. And by inviting their insights, we can gain a more comprehensive understanding of our behavior and its impact on others. Well, it's like having a good rear view mirror in our car. Without it, it's difficult to see when a lane change is possible or even needed. So journaling, that uh, impact uh, input from others, and now attitude of gratefulness. When individuals take the time to reflect on what they are grateful for, they shift their focus from what they lack to what they have. Now, this practice can lead to increased happiness, reduced stress, and improved mental health. It can change everything. Gratitude helps individuals appreciate the present moment, moment and recognize the positive aspects of their lives, which can provide a very strong foundation with an optimistic outlook, making it easier to navigate challenges and setbacks. It can also foster a positive work environment. 
So an example of this, of an organization that practices gratefulness through the years has been Zappos. And Zappos is an online shoe and clothing retailer known for its exceptional company culture, or they have been through the years. And Zappos have, they've encouraged a, a culture of gratitude among its employees through various initiatives, such as peer-to-peer -peer recognition, pro recognition programs, and company-wide appreciation events. Employees are regularly encouraged to express gratitude and acknowledge each other's con contributions, fostering a supportive and a positive work environment. Well, this practice not only enhances employee morale, but it also translates into better customer service as happy and appreciated employees, well, they are more likely to provide outstanding service. So let's talk about some tips now besides the journaling, getting input from others and practicing gratefulness. Well, let's talk about some tips for shifting focus from others to yourself. To shift focus from critiquing others to self-improvement, the practices of listening, understanding, and empathy are necessary. Now, I have to admit, I'm fairly low on the empathy quotient, but I've learned how important it is to listen for what really matters. So instead of jumping to judgment, listening with an ear to recognize a different perspective or a feeling on an issue can make all the difference. And someone's feeling they need to feel heard and for implementing change. Well, it's good to take a moment to consider what might be driving someone's behavior and how, how you would feel in their shoes. This shift from judgment to empathy not only fosters better relationships, but also cult it cultivates a more harmonious and compassionate environment, both for ourselves and for those around us. Another effective strategy is to limit social media consumption. Now, social media often fuels the tendency to compare ourselves to others and to judge our lives based on those curated snapshots. And we want to just reshare everything, too. By reducing the time spent on these platforms, we can, we can minimize the influence of those external comparisons and focus more on our own journey. Additionally, it's good to make a conscious effort to celebrate others' successes. So instead of feeling envy or resentment when someone else achieves something, we'll try to genuinely share in their joy and their accomplishments. Recognizing and celebrating the successes of others can shift our mindset from competition to collaboration, fostering a sense of that, that community and shared happiness. More than ever, this feeling of collaboration and, and connection, those, those feelings and that, that act of connecting with others has become even more important after we experience so much isolation when the world shut down for an extended period of time with a pandemic. So important. Let's talk about a few benefits if we go through these processes, benefits of self-improvement. When individuals actively work on personal growth, well, they develop better communication skills, greater empathy, and a more positive outlook on which all of which contribute to a healthier and more meaningful relationship and even better health. The studies have shown that individuals who engage in self-improvement practices report higher levels of happiness and life satisfaction. Uh, Self-help authors and speakers, they've long emphasized the transformative power of self-improvement. In fact, within the online mentorship course, the one I've put together, Hero Mountain Summit, the links are in the article, we go through the steps for both personal and professional growth with the tools that encourage growth, as well as help to answer what's next. Many people don't have those tools. It's important to develop those no matter what age, stage of life you are at. And part of this process is looking in the mirror, looking in that mirror to evaluate our own lives instead of using a magnifying glass on others. Well, Stephen R. Covey, he was the author of The Seven 
highly, the seven habits of highly effective people. And he also underscores the importance of self-improvement and reflection. This is, this is his quote. Personal development is the belief that you are worth the effort, the time, and energy needed to develop yourself. These words of wisdom, they remind us that dedicating time and effort to self-improvement is a valuable investment that yields profound and lasting benefits, enhancing both our personal and our professional lives. Well, let's apply this. What do we walk away with? By emphasizing self-awareness through regular practices like journaling, constructive questioning and conversations, and gratefulness, we can foster better relationships, increased happiness, and a greater sense of fulfillment. We've also discussed the pitfalls of constantly critiquing others and the benefits of empathy, compassion, and celebrating others' successes. Well, I really encourage you to take small, consistent steps toward that self-improvement and self-reflection with that mirror, as even minor changes can lead to significant personal growth. And as we wrap up this episode, I invite you to share your experiences and thoughts on self-reflection and self-improvement. What practices have worked for you? And how have, how have you navigated the balance between self-examination and the understanding of others? By sharing those, your insights can inspire and support others. Make sure that you check out the article that comes with this. I put extra resources there, extra links that you can link to. You can review all of the principles very, very easily. With every single message that I present, there is an article. The newsletter comes out every week as well with those articles and with the updates on podcasts. We have a podcast at least once a week, sometimes twice. Goalsforyourlife.com forward slash newsletter. Also, I have other websites you can check out. Deborah Jones and Speaker, DJ Works Music. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this um, episode, this message has touched your, your life in some way between the mirror and the magnifying glass. The two tools that work many of the same ways, but so, so differently in our lives. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll look forward to being with you again next time. Bye-bye for now. Thank you for joining us. It is because of our wonderful listeners like you that we keep going strong week after week. We'd love it if you'd share and follow us to not miss a single show and even write a review. You can also find all of our articles, products, and links at womenathalftime.com.